Hello guys, today we're going to explore the questions in 1.1.3 data storage. For this topic of the IGCSD computer science, there are two main question areas, file type and compression types. So let's go. So for file types, you basically have to know about MIDI, which is Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and MP3 files. There are several questions asking you to explain MIDI or MP3 files like this one. In case the question asks you to explain one file format in four points, it is safe to at least memorize four features or points for each file, and for safety, five in case one you memorize is not included in the marking scheme. For a MIDI file, you should memorize these points. So MIDI file contains instructions of how the sound should be played, and it specifies pitch of notes and it specifies volume of notes. This just means individual notes can be changed and the details of those notes are stored. So it also stores the notes, not the actual sound. And for most of the question, you can also get points for the definition that MIDI is a musical instrument digital interface file. Moving on to MP3 file, you should memorize these points. It contains the actual sound. It uses a lossy compression. This compression method is called perceptual music shaping, but you really don't have to know about that. And it is recorded using microphone. The first three points are the key points that all the mark scheme or marks. The low two points are the fourth points, which vary among the marking schemes, so we cannot ascertain which mark is credited or not, besides the top three. Anyway, it's safer to perhaps memorize all five of them. So MP3 file is also a format for digital audio and it contains metadata. Metadata just means it is a data of how data is stored. One final tip is that if the question explicitly asks the difference between those two file types, you can also talk about the purpose like MP3 is used for distributing sound files and MIDI is used for composing music. Mentioning, and most importantly, mentioning both sides in one difference will award you two marks. So what I mean by this is just saying that MP3 file contains the actual sound will award you one mark. But if you just, if you say MP3 file contains the actual sound, but MIDI file contains the stores, the notes, not the actual sound, it'll award two separate marks. So that's it for these two file questions. Second area of this section of IGCSC is compressions. There are mainly lossy compression and lossless compression as you have learned in the class. First question of the compression section is the definitions of each compression. So for example, the question comes like this and it asks, describes how lossless compression reduces the size of the file. So lossless compression uses a compression algorithm. This is a universal point for both compression. So it does, and it does not permanently remove any data. And repeated patterns of notes, words, or pixels are identified and given a value. And those identified patterns are grouped with index. So that's how lossless compression compresses file. And for lossy compression, same with lossless compression, it uses a compression algorithm and it permanently removes data. And unnecessary data is removed from file like the background noise in the sound file. However, the resolution is reduced. After memorizing these four points for each compression, you can now also answer a typical compression question in the IGCC computer science. The question usually looks like this, and it gives the con context and asks which compression should be used, and give an explanation for it. The one mark is awarded for correct identification of compression that should be used, and the rest of the marks for the explanation of that compression. Since now for the explanation part, you can answer it using the definitions for the two compression, you only need to know which compression should be used. So there are manuals for the context. When a phrase file should be smallest as possible comes up, referring to the small size of the file, it is a lossy compression because it is more compressed. When an important file is being sent, like a source code of a program, or there is an allusion to or original file that should be restored, it is lossless compression because the original file can be restored only in the lossless compression. And finally, when a phrase related to quality of the file comes up, 
it is a lossless compression because the resolution is reducing the lossy compression. One tip that I want to say is when they ask you to give explanation, just don't try to explain why this is more suit why this compression type is more suitable, but trying to give an overview or feature of the compression you chose. The final questions for the compression section is the benefit of the compression itself and the benefit of lossy and lossless compression. The benefit of compression itself is that it takes up less storage space and is it makes it quicker to unload and download file from website. For the benefit of lossy and lossless compression, so the advantages of lossy compression, it has smaller file size and it requires less storage space. And for advantages of lossless compression is that original file can be restored and it has a better quality of file. And for disadvantages of both compression, you can just think in an antagonistic way. What I mean by this is if an, if an advantage of lossy compression is smaller file size, you can write for the disadvantage of lossless compression that it has a bigger file size. So this antagonistic way of thinking is very effective for answering the benefits of lossy and lossless compression. So those are all the main questions for the 1.1.3 data storage but you need to remember these are not all the questions in the subtopic. I personally recommend you to study besides these questions how MP4 works or which compression does each file type like GIF and JPEG uses. Since these are minor, minor questions, I really didn't include it in my video, but for solid preparation, you should know about them. Anyway, these are the key questions that most frequently come up. And if this video helped you, that is great.